This is Freedom Catalina. She is a registered quarter horse mare, uh, a four or a five year old, and she belongs to one of my clients, Cindy. Uh, Munchie, or Munchkin as we call her, came to me originally back in January of 2012 for some basic training because she was too nervous and spooky for Cindy to ride her out on trails and actually I guess then even in an arena setting she didn't like to have anything uh, too distracting or anything moving around under her body um, so working trail obstacles at that time would have been a problem when I met Munchie she was a very sweet in kind of an in-your-pocket kind of a horse as long as you weren't asking her to do anything. Once you would start to pressure her to work for you, she had a bit of an attitude. So I did uh, some ground foundation on her when I first met her and then got her to a good place where Cindy was able to ride her. Cindy took her home for the summer and then she brought her back to me this fall to do a little bit more training. So here we are riding in just a rope hackamore which is a piece of equipment that I like to ride horses in until I get them really understanding what I want. And we're going to work some basic trail obstacles here. Uh, some of these are at a little bit of a distance, so that was just some Cavaletti pulls, and then we're going to go over a little bridge here. And this is a completely unedited video, so any mistakes that we make are going to be included, and I think that's great for training purposes. We're coming up on just a pivot box. Basically what I have are some 2x4s just laid out on the ground in the shape of a box. And I put her front feet in the box and I'm asking her to just uh, do a turn on the forehand to move her hind end around the box. And I'm trying, of course, too, to not bump any of the boards. And so now I'm going to have her go, looks like I'm going to have her go the other way. And now I'm just going to have her side pass over just a ground pull, just a basic, basic ground pull for side passing. And I think now I'm going to have her straddle the ground pole so that I have two feet, one front foot and one back foot on one side and the other front foot and back foot on the other side. And what's really neat with this mare, when I met her, she would just get very upset if she was to bump and move a pole or a barrel or a cone. We worked, uh, you know, for quite a few hours just on the ground at the beginning of her training just building confidence with having uh, you know different objects bump and touch and knock over underneath her body and against her legs just to you know get her confidence up because she she really didn't like that in the beginning and here it looks like I'm just having her do a little a little side pass keeping her rear end towards the cone At this point in her training, this is probably only the second or third time that I've ridden her through an entire course of obstacles. And as I said, I had her for 
I think three months from January until you know the springtime just getting the basics all together she went home for the summer Cindy did trailer her in a few times uh, for riding lessons and then at that point we were just trying to get the owner caught up to the horsemanship skills you know get their horsemanship skills caught up to the skill level of the horse and then she came back for a little bit more training I like to get the foundation of the horse uh, really down without using spurs and without um, riding in a snaffle and then you know eventually I'd like to be able to ride the horse in a curb bridle you know in a curb bit with reins with one hand only on the reins and the horse really needs to understand how to work off of my seat and leg cues if I try to do any of that too soon it kinda you know takes away now I can tell you on this right here is a bag a plastic bag with aluminum soda cans and this is the very first time that I've ever attempted to drag this or play with this bag while mounted on the horse I did uh, on one previous session have a little ground session where I played a little desensitizing game with uh, munchkin and this bag but this is the first time and I just asked her to drag it backwards now it looks like I'm gonna have her turn and go for a little walk and now I'm gonna pull it in closer and see I'm kinda giving her a little little reassurance there she's licking her lips and saying oh, okay I guess we're gonna live I think uh, specifically a plastic bag or a blowing tumbleweed was uh, one of the things that uh, Cindy had uh, said would really really bother Munchkin if she had her out riding Munchkin would get really worried and spook from from things like that so and now I'm just gonna go get rid of that see if I can just kind of throw it over the fence yeah. I think now what I'm going to do is have her back a figure eight around these two barrels. Munchie is generally a lazy horse. She can get sticky pretty easily. Um, sometimes when you try to ask her to move her hind end over she'll she'll try to brace on the rein and it's really important to make sure that you get her her head to kind of break free like I just did there I just kind of tipped her head to the right and that helps me to get her hip to move over to the left so lazy horses a lot of times don't want to have to go backwards or give their hip because that's giving up some of the control that they would like to maintain <laughs> so again this is why I like to ride the horse get her as responsive and light as I can in that rope hackamore also putting a bit in the horse's mouth uh, for certain things too soon will cause some horses just to feel more claustrophobic and then they're pulling on the reins and chomping on the bit I, I have maximum control for um, 
maximum safety for myself just riding in this row pack -a more as long as I have prepared the horse properly from the ground. This is the safest way for me to work a horse through new situations. Once I have some training and some foundation riding in the row pack -a more then I can switch over to riding in a snaffle and then riding in a curb as the horse is understanding how to follow my cues. And then I could add some spurs for a little finesse if I need them. Now right there I just side passed over a ground pole and then we had a couple of white barrels with the ground pole and now I've got one more that I'm side passing over and there's one behind that and I'm having her pivot around so that I can I'm now backing between two ground pulls. And she did that pretty nicely. That was pretty nice for her. So some of these obstacles she's done in bits and pieces, you know, during the course of training. Some of them she's only done from the ground before. Some of them she's never done. And it looks like I just kind of had her back into position so that I could now do the obstacle again addressing it from her left side. And you'll notice in my training process sometimes my body positions when I'm teaching a horse are a little exaggerated. That makes it really clear for the horse uh, which way they can go when I keep that leg you know further away while I'm pushing them over with the other leg and rein. It also is easier for riders that are learning to start learning things in a more exaggerated way and then they can they can pretty it up later after they have a complete understanding of where they need to put their body parts. Looks like I'm just going to take her for a trot right now. We filmed this video a month or so ago, a while back. I can't quite remember what I'm going to do. So, mm. It's like I'm asking her to transition into a canter. She did not get the correct lead there but I didn't reprimand her for it because she did transition into a canter and this is a lazy horse so that's kind of a big deal for her. Ask her again and I'll ask her to drop to trot. I like to teach horses to pick up the canter off of a figure eight pattern like this and there this time she got the correct lead. Pretty good job with the munchkin.